leads you, but you have a story, you have a story. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I didn't really understood, understand what they meant when they said I had a story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just lost my arms and my legs, and basically, I can't do anything. So that's what I was thinking my story was. Right. You know? But then, not to mention, I'm not really the type of person to get up in front of a crowd of 5,000 plus and just talk about myself for two hours either. Right. So. I didn't really like the idea at first when everybody first started bringing it up. Then I had my very first speaking engagement. My health teacher, Dr. Redican, I'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. He was actually, they were talking about meningitis in class, and he asked me if I would put together like a little 30 minute PowerPoint presentation and kind of tell my story. Well, at this point in time, you know, I still wasn't 100%. I didn't know, I still have a lot of black holes in my story mm-hmm. that I just had no idea about what had happened at mm-hmm. those given times. Mm-hmm. So I was a little skeptical about it, I guess you could say. So I ended up, you know, collaborating with some friends and just trying to figure out what would be the best way for me to do this without having to really give too, too much of my story because right. of what I did not know. Right. So I put together a presentation of basically how the disease moves to your blood, moves through your body, and just basically just rips you apart inside. Um, and just, you know, how it just basically deteriorates and eats at your organs internally and the outside as well. Yeah. And just doing that, it's kind of like as I was standing there talking about the PowerPoint, things started coming to me mm. from, you know, being in the hospital. It was kind of like... That was the therapy that I needed at that point in time. And that was actually the day when I, you know, I was ready to start talking about it. Like, Every anybody day, all who day. around me, I yeah. needed to know what happened at this given point in time. Right. What happened then? What happened there? So you, so, in, in, in educating other people about what you went through, about just the, the medical difficulties that you faced with, with bacterial meningitis, you got clarity on your own. You came to your own understanding of everything that you were going through and and everything that you had experienced. Right. So I guess you could say I um, I recovered wanting to know exactly what happened very fast. Right. So I actually, I ended up only taking a semester off of school. Mm-hmm. I returned back that summer. And once I returned back in the summer, again, I started taking public speaking courses and I loved it. I started inviting my coaches and my teammates to come listen to me because I needed a bigger audience. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Right, you know. So right then and there, that's when I saw myself starting to come to, you know. I'd always been used to being in the limelight, being in the spotlight, you know, having the crowd's eyes on me type thing. And it was kind of like that's what's happening now. Yeah. So, you know. I have to tell you all, WGIV, I have to tell you all, Raina has been, you know, since since going through this, Raina has been recognized with many prestigious awards in sports, including the most courageous award at the Men's Final Four in 2003, the Women's Sports Foundation, uh, Foundation's Wilma Rudolph Courage Award in 2005, mm-hmm. uh, including the Congressional Ellis Island Medal of Honor in 2009, and the McDonald's Athlete of the Day for the Military Paralympics in 2004, I mean 2009. Um, as a quadruple uh, amputee, you have gone around the, the world telling your story at this point, kind of rejuvenated yeah. yourself and, and made a new life for yourself. Can you tell me in this month of November, you know, my theme is, is having an attitude of gratitude. Can you tell me what you're most thankful for in, in, in your journey? Most definitely. I'm I'm just most thankful for life and my family and friends, honestly. Um, Because, you know, and I'm really just the world. It's a lot of people out here in the world that have no idea who I am. I was just a sick student athlete, and they felt the need to pray, send flowers, Mm -hmm. cards, teddy bears, whatever it was, or, you know, whatever anybody did in my time of need, it was, it was greatly appreciated. It's like, if there was a way I could send an email out to the world just to say thank you, whether mm-hmm. or not they helped me, I would love to do that. Yeah. A lot of people that go through traumatic situations and they don't have anybody, you know, they don't have a support system, right. somebody to talk to, somebody to hold them, somebody to tell them that they love them. And I had all of that, you yeah. know, my teammates, my school, yeah. the UVA, you know, coaches and players, like everybody. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, all the NCAA schools, high school, you know, like you said, my Ola Mill High School who put on a mini carnival for me, um, just everybody. It was, that was my therapy, I guess you could say. That gave me the, that gave me the courage to be like, all right, you know, it's time to get up. Like, it's time to stop feeling sorry for yourself. Like, let's, let's do something. What can we do about this? Can you talk about, I got, you know, once I got that mentality, I knew that it was going to be, this was going to be fun, I guess you could say. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So you went from feeling sorry for yourself. I was about to say, can you talk a little bit more just about the dark spaces? I mean, we can't, we can't, you know, forget that, that, that your whole life turned and, and it couldn't have been all, all peaches and cream, but it sounds like you really were able to capitalize on that. Oh, most definitely. I, um, you know, nobody ever wants to admit when they're depressed or, Mm -hmm. you know, something's not right. Nobody ever wants to admit that or talk to a therapist and you know I was that kid I didn't I didn't want to admit to the fact that, that I just lost my hands and my feet and I was no longer going to be an, an athlete I was no longer going to be I guess you say anything that I wanted to be at that point in time yeah so for me it was hard being past the physical yeah layer once I got past that you know it was it was really easy but I was depressed I was you know I spent most of my time laughing and joking yes. and cracking on myself just to make sure everybody else around me was comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody was used to the quad amputee Raina, you right. know? Right, Like, Raina, I was sorry. I was always used to, you know, being the life of the party, um, just being the center of attention, and it's not like that anymore. Like, I would much rather be that person all the way back in the corner. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, oh, why is she acting so weird? No, I'm just, you know, this is just in my zone now. I'm a lot, I'm, I'm more aware, I guess right. you could say. Right, 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 right. Um, I definitely, the way I look at situations is probably a thousand times different than any other person will look at situations. A new know? perspective like, on yeah, things. I've gone through this life-changing disease and, and at the same time you know it, it it does affect the way I look at things mm-hmm. the way I think about things the way I do things you know it affects me yeah because you know I might be my toughness might be a little bit too much for that next person yes you know and they might not understand exactly why I might be coming at them so hard or something like that yes so, I like to say you everybody know, has a story and, and you just don't know what somebody else is, is going through or what somebody else has on their mind. Exactly. It's, yeah. always, it's like the, the saying goes, you know, you don't, you really don't know what somebody else has been through unless you sit down and talk to them. Absolutely. We all have our own struggles, you know, our own adversities that we're all trying to get over each day. Right. And, you know, luckily me having, me being an athlete and having that athletic mindset you know, like from day one, I was ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> like well, from the day I woke up out of a coma, like I had an agenda, I had a schedule. It was finals time. Uh, you know, it was playoff time. We were still practicing. We had individual workouts, so it was difficult. I I didn't want to. Under-